Hello everyone, my name is Yoshikazu Sugiura. I'm a structural engineer and a senior project engineer at Nihonseki Incorporated in Japan. Today, I will be talking about the structural design of a sports arena with vibration control mechanism. I divided my presentation in three parts. First, I'd like to introduce the facility that I will be talking about today. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the structural design and the vibration control structure. Finally, I will show you the construction procedure control. Let's take a look at the facility. The Musashino Forest Sports Plaza is a multipurpose arena facility and is to be used for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. In this presentation, I will explain the structure design of the main arena, which you can see on the right side of the picture. The site is located in the hill of Musashino, adjacent to Tamagawa River Plateau, and the park with the abandoned green. The facility was designed with a focus on the role it played in this landscape of Musashino. The facility consists of two buildings the main arena building and sub-arena building. By dividing it into two sections, it could be well placed in a regularly shaped site. The main arena welcomes people with a 40-meter cantilever eaves. The foyer of the main arena welcomes many spectators. As you can see, the exterior of the main arena is a double skin system with environmental items such as green panels and perforated aluminum panels. It was designed not only to accommodate local sports activities and international athletic competitions, but also large scale events, including music events. Let's move on to the next topic, structural design. The structural design concept was to solve these large spaces with various forms using a simple planar truss as a basic structure. As you can see on the right, the main arena building has a symbolic organic oval. The roof frame was structured by steel pipe trusses with the simple planar trusses as a basic unit. The stand structure was designed as a steel frame reinforced concrete structure. Now I'm going to introduce you the roof structure system. The short side direction consists of two structural systems. The first system is designed to handle vertical and horizontal loads and consists of four main elements. The first element is the planar truss girder that supports the roof. It matches the moment distribution and the vertical load and the truss shape. The pivot column bears the vertical load of the truss. The truss column bears the horizontal load of the truss girder. Cantilever beams receive the truss columns. In here, Bearing only the vertical load, the pivot column could be formed as a small diameter column resembling the grove of Musashino Forest. The other structural system is a steel truss shear wall on the north and the south side of the arena. This system primarily resists horizontal loads. Each of these truss walls bear 30% of the horizontal force and the truss columns bear 40% horizontal force. In the long side direction, braces with sufficient stiffness and strength were installed on the roof surface and the wall surface on the purpose of resisting horizontal force as an outer shell structure. All dumpers are installed at the joint of the truss gutters and the truss columns. Oil dumpers provide damping effects against the horizontal and the vertical motion. When the truss girder sways vertically and horizontally, the oil dumper deforms the actual direction to provide damping effects and reducing the roof vibration. Showing here is the horizontal motion of truss girders, and showing here is the vertical motion of the truss beam. As shown on the glass, 
or dumpers absorbs about 20% of input energy of extremely real seismic motion. Now, I'd like to go over the construction procedure of plane atlases. Taking advantage of the simple shape of the plane atlas, the deformation and the fall of the force were controlled. The thrust acts constantly on the thrust columns. To reduce this load, thrust release was carried out. I'd like to explain the seven steps of the construction procedures. Step 1. The loose trusses were divided into five blocks, and each block was assembled, maintained, and rolled on the ground. Step 2. The construction camber is established by properly assembling the five divided blocks. Step 3. After welding the five blocks, erection supports were removed. Step 4. The thrust was released by sliding the sliding bearing on the end supports horizontally while jacking down the central supports. 5. Pivot clamp base were weld. Step 6. The drift pin connection was also connected with the truss column. Step 7. The end supports and the central supports were jacking down to transmit the weight of the roof to the pivot columns. I'd like to finish my presentation by summarizing the main points. By arranging plane addresses, a free roof form is possible to be realized rationally. All dampers are installed to ensure the damping effect of vibration caused by earthquakes and strong winds. As a result, a large space structure with high safety is realized using a simple structural system. Thank you very much for listening my presentation.